This video is not intended to basically be like uh, advice on what to do. This is just going to be talking about my experience and some things to consider. But, uh, you know, this stuff is not, you know, something to necessarily jump into. And you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you're physically capable of doing some of these things if you are going to try it out. But, again, this is based off my experience and things that I've learned. But... <clears throat> I, I've done some videos on like warrior fitness and like uh, workouts and uh, the name isn't really supposed to be you know the tactical kind of thing but to kind of analyze uh, uh, the movements that are done in the fact that uh, typically staying within uh, that category of uh, staying specifically in those movements help you be more efficient but build the muscles in the specific build the specific muscles uh, that actually help you perform certain tasks. Uh, with uh, with respect to combat and uh, you know um, movement to contact and stuff like that military wise or you know the specific stuff that you're doing like competition shooters are gonna have a, a different need than uh, somebody who's uh, performing a lot of patrols so um, this is gonna be kind of general but also uh, you gotta understand my history is uh, basically light infantry the Marine Corps is uh, one of the biggest light infantry uh, units and uh, there are others like Rangers and stuff like that. Special Forces also has this in their indoctrination, the SAS, uh, British SAS, and a lot of others. <clears throat> uh, they still train their people um, in a lot of these qualities because they uh, really uh, they're they're behind the lines element, so they are uh, typically responsible for towing their own equipment and. Uh, America is a little bit different, uh, like mine, we did uh, focus on uh, hoping to have resupplies, but we needed to prepare for the fact that we would be isolated for a while, because it can be difficult to have <clears throat> a lot of logistical support when you have a certain, it, when you have a certain enemy that has the ability to prevent logistical support. Uh, so you have to be self-sufficient, airborne uh, training also uh, helps them with that as well. So. Anyways, in my evaluation and my experience, <clears throat> there's some things that you might want to focus on if you are going to work out according, accordingly and just go down the line as usual with the chalkboard of death. <laughs> but um, some things you want to focus on is endurance, and we'll get to uh, the combination here, some, uh, and also power, the ability to uh, lift a lot or uh, put out a lot of energy in, uh, in short bursts and stuff like that, like rushes and of being able to uh, lift people and stuff like that, being able to uh, deliver a lot of power and a lot of energy really quickly, that's very important. Uh, speed as well. You need to be able to move fast, and you need, and that kind of goes with the with agility and stuff like that. So that's kind of one thing that is missing is agility and flexibility, uh, and also support and stuff like that. So these kind of go hand in hand with uh, you know agility um, and flexibility. Now recovery. That's something that is actually specifically looked for in a, a lot of special forces. So you may not have the, let's say, um, <clears throat> let's use the example of. Um, basically a tab, a tactical advance to battle, as uh, the British would call it and uh, European forces would call it, so tabbing. Uh, so you might have to move in, uh, as light infantry, um, you might actually have to move further behind enemy lines or work your way back and uh, or uh, penetrate deep behind in enemy lines and you might have to go um, places or as deep as like 26 kilometers or have to move somewhere where vehicles can't or it's a lot easier to have a low profile if you're just walking long distances uh, and avoiding detection. So you might actually have to move pretty quickly. Now that doesn't mean that you're going non-stop. That uh, where recovery comes in is basically using endurance. You, you need to be able to quickly recover in order to have that operational endurance because once you get to where you're going you might actually have to fight. It actually might be like uh, with rangers they're uh, big in being able to assault. That, that's one of their core traditions is being able to uh, get to where they're going and then being able to attack <clears throat> and still having the ability to do that. So all these are very important and recovery is something that can help. So you might only go like um, I mean, eight kilometers at a time, but your recovery time is very low. That was one of the things we focused on. You'd only get, like, in 20 miles, you'd only get, like, um, a five, ten minute break to hydrate and uh, look at your feet or whatever, and that was pretty standard. Recovery time and also uh, being able to 
I mean, get up and go and still fight when you get there. That's that's exactly what light infantry is really for. Uh, so, anyways, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that you uh, that I focus on is, uh, or you, what you'll see, basically being really effective uh, for uh, from what um, a lot of you know people have uh, seen as far as like uh, what you see in combat being really effective for preparing you for combat uh, is actually high repetitions and um, more than six sets. I know the tradition is like three or four sets or whatever um, but uh, really what you'll see is if you perform more than six sets or if you perform <clears throat> more sets throughout like a course of a week your body gets conditioned to that in uh, doing weighted lifts like for example wearing your body armor uh, and doing like pull-ups or um, doing manipulations or just wearing your body armor constantly and doing things like uh, a lunges or kneeling to standing under a timer to where you're actually forcing yourself to do it within a certain amount of time uh, doing sprints or something like that uh, doing it weighted can condition uh, certain parts of your body and, or a certain part of your body and <clears throat> Uh, the areas that are obviously going to be important is legs, core, and arms. So, uh, legs is obvious. You need to be able to move. You need to be able to move fast, and you need to be able to move for a good amount of time. And that actually kind of goes down to technique of your walk and how you are keeping your knees bent and stuff like that um, <clears throat> when you're standing still. And the way that you kneel, having a little bit of part kind of saves your knees and also can help support your joints a little bit better. And core and back. And so kind of core is kind of wrapped up with back and that's I didn't really have all the room I should have put well I had the room to put back but whatever. So core is very important and also your gear uh, the way it's laid out can actually relieve your core but that doesn't mean you can neglect your core. Uh, you need to actually <clears throat> make sure that your core is strong in that and that kind of goes into agility. You'll find that when you're trying to be agile is uh, the core is more meant for uh, stability and holding certain positions so that's kind of something that you'll find out like if you're moving really slow uh, <clears throat> getting up really slow like if you are going from place to place like at night or uh, just over distance typically the slower the movement the harder it is for a human eye to spot you and so that that comes into it as well so uh, yeah that's just something to keep in mind and arms obviously weapon manipulations holding stuff for a certain amount of time and being able to actually <clears throat> get your gear on quickly or working with just crawling with just your arms or whatever because sometimes when you're using your legs um, kicking kicking up is kind of natural with the movements and that's kind of where agility comes in as far as having your legs uh, and your joints able to be flexible and isolate those movements to keep a low profile and stuff like that and practicing that to get your legs used to that and get your arms conditioned to actually helping you crawl and uh, get you in position real fast and stuff. So there is a lot of work that you can do, but it really comes down to mimicking the movements and the conditions that you're going to be operating under. So if you're going to be carrying a pack and you might have to go into the kneeling or you might have to respawn to fire, you might want to actually practice those types of movements and ones that aren't going to hurt your legs or your knees when you get down into the kneeling and uh, kind of controlling your descent will come into play with uh, your back and your core and stuff like that, getting up really fast and stuff, uh, <clears throat> manipulating your gear. So speed is going to be important, power is going to be important, and obviously enough endurance to continue the fight but fast recovery because when you're actually doing rushes, the biggest thing is recovery, getting your breathing under control and recovering fast enough to be able to place well aim shots to actually provide efficient support because actually sufficient suppression is taking somebody out. So just spraying and praying is BS and you know you, <clears throat> you need to be a little diligent about putting your... Uh, putting your rounds where they need to go, not just in the general direction. So anyways, don't be a stormtrooper when it comes to actually trying to help your buddy out because a, a trained unit is not really going to be manipulated or uh, suppressed by just spraying and praying. And you see that a lot with War on Terror. Like we weren't even, you know, lowering our heads unless there was actually a effective fire coming in. But anyways, uh, <clears throat> also working with the gear that you have, is actually very advantageous and just wearing your gear and doing everyday activities can help condition your legs or get them used to certain things and 
you know, having proper gear also, like actual insoles in order to support the arches of your feet can go a long way. Certain types of boots that will actually work if they get wet. Uh, or maybe get waterproof boots, but waterproof boots that will last a good amount of time and also having good traction and stuff like that. Ankle support might be important. Or uh, a, a wider profile like the Marine Corps Rats boots. Uh, they have a wider sole than they do, you know, the body. So also stitching and stuff like that. So durability of equipment can actually go into that. And that really kind of goes with lightweight uh, gear. It'll just enhance the endurance that you have and the ability to provide a good amount of power in like your sprints and stuff and speed. Uh, you need to be combat effective as it were. And so all this will be enhanced if you also help with carrying lightweight gear and being more efficient with the layout too. So as far as fitness is concerned, this is really a big deal to actually understand what you're going to be going under. And the last thing I want to touch on is it's not evil to have a line of uh, visceral fat, and that's belly fat. Uh, I'm not saying that you need a beer gut or anything like that, but actually if you are consistently working long, long term, like <clears throat> when I was in, uh, we would do things where we were setting up temporary LPOPs and we were constantly on the move simulating being behind enemy lines and we would just get a little bit of a break here and there uh, for observation and uh, look, listen, smell and all that other stuff to patrol uh, and uh, you know see where we're at, get our bearings and everything but uh, there was a lot of this going on that we we had to use and uh, constantly being on the move you need to have this ability right here, endurance and in recovery. Uh, these other things are very dependent on the type of mission, but um, yeah, so uh, that's that's my experience with this stuff, and I'm sorry to kind of jabber on, but I believe that it's important to kind of go into a bit of detail to explain my case. But again, this is not saying this is what you need to focus on. Go ahead and do it now. Uh, you got to make sure that, number one, you're able to do this. I'm not responsible for that. You are. And also, depending on the mission that you're going to be working on, you might be, you know, more concerned with concealed carrier direct action or whatever your job is. Maybe you're a police officer and you want to be conditioned for that. You're, obviously, the priorities are going to be a little bit different. Uh, so, anyways, uh, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. You know, uh, give it some thought and you got to take care of yourself and, uh, and think um, based on what you're trying to prepare for, but I hope this was helpful. i kind of given you an idea of how I digested and brainstormed and uh, looked at this stuff based off experience. And uh, going to the gym and just doing a bunch of barbell lifts isn't really going to prepare you. you uh, from my experience, uh, I wasn't really prepared by just going to the gym and doing, you know, stereotypical movements. It was more mimicking uh, the actions uh, with some athletic movement because push-ups, pull-ups, that's really athletic, but working with your gear and stuff, that'll concentrate on certain muscles that are more important. Uh, so anyways, <clears throat> it's a little bit different than being a well-rounded Captain America looking you who uh, which is kind of unrealistic for these kinds of, this kind of performance. Uh, so anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, and you guys have a good one.